Hello, this video is to show you how to customize your library in Automation Studio. As you know, there's a lot of component in each category of the library. For example, if you click on Hydraulic and you go to Pressure Gauge, Pressure Relief Valve, there's a lot of models in here, which could be sometimes overwhelming for a student. We give you the possibility to create your own library in Automation Studio. Let's see how it's made. First of all, you will click on this icon where it says New Library. Then it's asking you for a name. Let's give it a name, Famic Tech. And then in this library, I can create a category, which I will name Hydraulic. And below Hydraulic, I can create another category, which I will call Lab 1. Let's say that this schematic is my lab one. What I can do is simply drag and drop these components in the library to create a custom library that matches exactly all the component that you need to create the lab one. Okay, so you can create as many categories as you want for each exercise if you want. What you can also do is you can take these components here at the bottom. You can right click on them, group, and drag them in the library as one component, which you can rename as well if you want. Just rename it, let's say, Power Unit. So next time the students can directly go in that library and drag the Power Unit out as one component. Let's say you have hydraulic trainers, for example. You can actually take this cylinder and you want it to display the exact same name that you have on your equipment. So I can double click on the cylinder. Obviously, you can enter all the parameters to make it match as close as possible to your hardware equipment, whether it's piston diameter, the stroke, all kinds of information. So we'll go now at the Identification tab, where we'll change the name of the cylinder. So let's say on my trainer, there's a, a little sign that shows CYL-2400, for example. And I may want to display that name on my schematic directly. So if I check this box, you will see that the name will be written on my schematic. I can move around this name. And once it's placed, I can go and edit tab and actually reduce the text if I want and even change the color of it. And once it's placed where I want, it's always going to remain at that location. And if I drag this component in my library now, it's going to be called CYL 2400. If I want, I could create a category here under Hydraulic, which I could call Hydraulic Trainer, and put all the components that I have on my trainer in this section with the exact same name, so the students, when they drag out the component, they will have all the name written beside the component, easy for them to understand, and when they're going to move on to the hardware part, to do the hands-on, they will automatically have their schematic printout with all the part numbers on it. This is applicable to any trainers that you may have, whether it's hydraulic, pneumatic, electrical, and PLC. What you can also do, let's say for example, I have my hydraulic trainer again. So let's go here and I'm going to insert a picture of my trainer. I come here. So this is the trainer. I can shrink the picture. It's big enough. And so this is the hydraulic trainer that I have in my classroom. And let's say on this trainer, this valve, I want to put the picture beside this valve for my students to always have an idea of how it looks like in real life. And maybe I'm going to have my student or to start working with the hydraulic from home. Therefore, for them to see a picture, once they'll come into the lab, they'll know exactly what to look for. So let's insert another picture. 
And this time I'm going to insert the picture of the, this, the valve here. So obviously it's too big, so let's shrink this picture. I can put it here beside the valve. I can select both element. I can right click, group it, and put it in a library, which I can also rename, for three normally close valve. Or I could have renamed it exactly the name that you see on the trainer. So as you can see, we offer a lot of flexibility with this library and we recommend that you use it in order to make it more easy for the students to start drawing with the application quickly. Let me show you one library that I have done. Let's put back the valve here. So let's open a library sample where I have put pictures like we've just did, let's say for a pressure gauge a flow meter, a pump. So you see, you can have picture for each equipment if you want. And this will not affect the simulation because it's beside the real symbol. You can insert pictures, whether it's BMP or JPEG, directly in the software and in the library. So what I can do now, I can erase that. Just to show you what you can do, you can also put the pictures on top of the symbol if you want, like that. And then when you start the simulation, they will just view the pictures and I can, you can still have access to the symbol behind it. So I can change the pressure like that also. So this could be the first introduction and those pictures can be put on a different layer. So with one click of a mouse, you can automatically hide all the picture and show the symbol behind it. Because you see, if I stop simulation, if I ungroup the entire group. Now if I ungroup this component, you see I simply put the picture on top of my relief valve. And I just made sure to leave the connection port visible. Then I select both element here. Right click, group. I can go in your customizable library and just drag it in here like I just did on the schematic. Just to give you another example, I have a customer who was teaching sprinkler system. But in Automation Studio, we can replace the oil in a system by water if we want. So what he did, he took a picture of a sprinkler head like that. And what he did behind that, let me zoom in, if I ungroup it. Behind this picture, he put a throttle valve with a reservoir. So it can simulate the flow loss that will generate the sprinkler by adjusting the throttle valve. And when it's done, you just grouped all the elements together, put that picture on top, and then he's gonna go here, order, bring to front. He select everything again, and then he groups it. So now students just connect the sprinkler heads and they will know, according to the pressure that they have in their line, if they'll have enough to supply a safe sprinkler system. Thank you for your time, and I invite you to watch the other training videos. Thank you.